Okay, so to tie your waist bead, I want to start like you're tying a shoe. So I do, we call it an X. When I was teaching my kids, I call it an X. So I'm going to do this first. Okay, I'm always going to keep my grip here and go under. This is the way I do it. I go under to make that first tie. Now this right here, what I'm getting ready to do is the most important. So what I'm looking for is to put the string through that hole, whichever way you want to do it. You want to put it through that hole. See what I just did? I put it through the hole. Now first I had did the X. Now I'm putting it through that hole. And this is where you want to just gently remove your fingers from the hole and slide that down, okay? Now I'm not going to tie it all away because I'm going to do that again. Okay, but that's the first tie. After that, you just want to keep putting it in uh, three or four times, however many times you think for it to be secure. Usually I do it like three times. I'll tie it three times. So this is, I'm making sure there's no gaps. Um, you tie it to where you want it to lie. This is your waistline. This is your hip. So some people like it um, over there belly button as long as they don't have a belly ring you don't want it above the belly ring you want it below because the bead will rub on the belly ring and it will break okay but if they're using the waist beads to track their weight you want it above the bulge and what I mean by bulge whatever the biggest part of their stomach is smallest part of their waist that's where you want to tie it because once you start to lose weight the bead will fall down you don't want many or any white gaps in there so I'm gonna try this again but I want to do it in slow motion okay so I am first taking the bead I made sure there were no gaps I'm making that X there's my X and I'm going underneath and pulling it just like I do my shoestring I'm going to repeat that I'm going to go underneath again but this is the crucial one so you want to just slowly release it there I go and then I'm secure now see it's not moving but just in case I do another one I even learned how to which you don't want to probably try this right now but I even learned how to kind of secure the thinner string that we use you know with another knot like that but it's all about practice. Um, I want you to try it again. You can still do that same thing again. I want you to try that again. So the cross. When I say cross, well, I'm not going to say anything. So when you cross it, what you were looking for, when I cross it like this, I'm still looking for that hole. Okay. Well, because it's already tied, yeah. you don't cross it. So now you're just doing another hole. Okay. I want you to put as many as you can until you get that hole right. So I want you to just tie, just keep tying. So the only thing you're looking for is the hole. See, wait, wait, there's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole by your fingertip. Yep. Yeah. Now slowly, so wait, 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 wait. That that knot needs to be down here. It needs to be all the way down here. Yep. Yeah. Boom. You got it. Do that again. <laughs> okay. So you want to double, okay, so yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> However you do it, as long as it gets tight, but make sure that knot is slid down there. So maybe you got to make it a little bigger. Wait, 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 wait. No, it's okay. You can go over it. Like if you ever did it too long, too far down, then you can go over that knot. You can go as far up as you need to like that. The main thing we want to do is get you to get the knot. Right. So go ahead, do it again. I don't care how many you make. I want to see you just continue to make them. Now 
Now, before you go too low, take that big part. Yeah, make sure it's all in there. Good job. Great. Slide it down as far as it can go. Yeah, good job. So, good job. All right. Good. 